What's going on, gang? It has been about a month since I last posted my, my video on my new Blue Blue Eddy home backup kind of solar storage solution that I'm doing here in my shop. I mentioned I'm gonna have quite a few upgrades. Uh, this is gonna be kind of episode two. So this is gonna kind of be what I've experienced throughout the last month of me actually using this. I did get another battery and I wanna show you folks the first thing that, that I kind of had to overcome. So I've got a B300S battery and I've got a B300 battery. So yes, you can use these two separate batteries. However, you have to get a special cable from Blue Eddy if you're using an AC300 because you've got a 150 amp port on the B300S. The B300 is only a 90 amp port. And so, those, the, and so the cables that come with the B300s only have a 90 amp connection. Long story short, let me climb up here on my table. You have to get this cable right here that is going to connect the AC300 with a 90 amp port going down into the B300S battery with a 150 amp port. The standard cable that you see right here with the, with the blue toggle locks, those will not work. Um, you have to get the cable that's got a 90 amp and 150 amp uh, connection to run the AC300 with the B300S, but it's worth it. Now I've got around six kilowatts worth of storage. Now the big thing that I did, which actually makes this whole thing way more useful and actually makes me want to get more solar, is that I installed a manual transfer switch. So I got this from Blue Eddy, but you can pick these up anywhere. This is just a Reliance box, the Pro Tran 2. It's got 10 circuits on it that I have tied into my sub panel and my main panel. So what I did was I kind of took about a week or two to kind of go around the house and really figure out what circuits I wanted to map to this Reliance manual transfer box. I ended up doing, of course, the main important things like the refrigerators and the circuit that, ha that runs my home internet. So in case we ever have power outage, my internet's gonna keep working because we all have to have internet to live nowadays, it seems like. But I ended up putting 10 circuits on and you know I could have used 20 circuits if I really wanted to. But right now, I've got these three on. So it's on gen, which is meaning it's running off directly off of this AC300. So one and two are my garage refrigerator and my kitchen refrigerator. And three is actually running my entire shop in here. Minus one of the dust collectors back there, that's on its dedicated own 20 amp circuit. And to me, that wasn't really a necessity to, to map that. I can live without a dust collector. But right now I'm, I'm running three circuits nonstop off of this Blue Eddy. Now what I have to do guys to make this thing kind of work and function for me is that, believe it or not, six kilowatts is not enough. Uh, I need probably at least one or two more batteries to really have a, a decent size home backup solution. But what I'm doing right now is I have this thing set on PV priority. So if you go in here into settings uh, and you go into next and you go into working mo mode, you can see I've got PV priority set. Um, I can change it to standard UPS, but I don't do that right now. But let me explain why I use PV priority. So during the day, Monday through, Monday through Friday, I have it on PV priority. And it's going to only charge these batteries via the 800 watts I have out in the back. When the battery gets to 40% during the week, it will, AC will take over and keep my loads running. It's not going to charge the batteries up full, but once I get to 40% to on the battery capacity, my AC grid will take over and start kind of doing like the bypass UPS mode. Now on Friday night at midnight, I actually get free electricity from midnight on Friday until midnight on Sunday. It's just a deal that I had with my electric provider. So what I do is on the weekends, I charge these batteries all the way up to full from the grid because it's free, right? So I charge these batteries up completely. And what I do is I'll go switch the UPS mode from PV priority to standard UPS on Friday at midnight. So throughout the entire weekend, I top off these batteries basically for free. And then on Monday, I switch it back to PV priority to harness my solar panels that are outside. So on a normal sunny day throughout the week, I can basically keep these batteries between 90 and 100% during the day. Overnight, when I wake up in the morning and I come back, and this has been running overnight on PV priority, I'm down to around 65 to 70%. So in the morning, it's starting that when the solar starts to, to actually charge these batteries, I can get close to 90 to 100% again. I have been supplementing it with this 600 watt 
foldable solar panel. So I'll take this and I'll throw it out in the middle of my driveway because again, this thing has two MPPTs. I've got an 800 watt string in my backyard and I've got these two solar inputs that I connect to this 600 watt power station and I throw it out there in the driveway. I don't have it out there today because I'm actually getting free energy right now. So I, I'm not that worried about capturing solar. It's just, it's, it's been working really well. I love the fact that I can come in here and change the UPS mode. I'm actually gonna put it back in a PV priority right now. I'm gonna go back, back, back. And you can see I'm still sitting at 100%. Right now I'm pulling 432 watts off of the few lights that I have running here in the shop, my refrigerator in the garage, and the refrigerator in the kitchen. Um, and if we do have a power outage, I've got the kitchen circuit tied in, I've got our bedroom circuit, I've got our kids' rooms circuits tied in. So if we ever do lose power, I can come out here to this transfer switch and flip on whichever one you know we want on. So that's been really great, and it comes with a 30 amp cable a twist lock 30 amp that goes in here and I just have the cable running around and that 30 amp is going right into the 30 amp receptacle on the AC 300. So that's how I have the transfer switch being powered from the Blue Eddy. And then I've still got six more 20 amp, 120 volt uh, outlets to use if I need to plug something in. It's just working really, really well, guys. Now what I have realized is those 800 watts that I installed on top of my pergola I'm able to get on a really good day around 650 watts. I'm surprised I was able to get that much with the, with the solar panels being flat, not really angled the right way, but I want to add around 400 more watts. So I ordered two 200 watt solar panels and I'm gonna show you folks how I'm gonna install on my fence line. I don't have that much space to install solar panels. So I'm just gonna do another install with two 200 watt panels on my fence line. Facing south is the best I can get it. I might find a way to angle them up to a little bit better angle to get to that sun, but I think adding around 400 more watts should in theory get me between 250 to 300 actual watts that I'm gonna be able to put into these batteries off of that new second array. But I'm gonna show you folks how I install that when the solar panels arrive. But overall, guys, this, this, this whole setup right here, I really honestly couldn't be happier. I'm not that happy with my uh, drywall skills because the guys did come in here. I did hire an electrician. I didn't do this myself. And the studs in these walls are a little bit funky. They're not 16 inch on centers. There was an extra stud right here for some reason. So we couldn't install it exactly where we wanted. So they kind of had to mangle up my wall and that's my, uh, that is my drywall skill, but this is the garage, I don't care. But, but overall, this whole setup's worked really well and this transfer switch has, has just, it's just worked guys. Um, that's all I can say. Um, it really makes this whole setup actually useful now because I am able to capture some of that solar energy and put it back into my house as free energy eventually. Of course you have to recoup all the expenses off of this and you know you can argue if you'll ever get that i don't know but uh to me it's not necessarily so much about recouping expenses as it is if we ever do have a power outage i have a system now that'll keep our fridges running and our internet going for two or three days until i hopefully can get some more batteries because uh, that's my goal is to put about two more batteries to have tw about 12 kilowatts worth of storage here in the shop i'm going to have to move this down here somewhere because two more batteries like that, it's gonna put that thing up in the ceiling. But that's my goal, but I kinda just wanted to give you folks an update on how things are going with this. Um, you can see that I did take down the little box that I built around it because I knew that I was gonna be adding another battery. I'm gonna build something else a little bit nicer th than what we had up there, but this is just kinda temporary setup until I, A, can figure out if I'm gonna get another battery and then I want to run that second solar string of 400 watts off of out, out in the backyard on my fence line, get all those wires kind of hidden, and then I'm gonna build the box uh, around it. But overall, guys, I just wanted to give you an update on how this thing's working. So far, it's worked great. Haven't had any issues whatsoever um, other than trying to find that, that right cable that, that I needed for the B300S battery to work with the AC300. But once I figured that out, everything's worked great. Uh, I can monitor this from Louisiana if I wanted to because I have a Wi-Fi connection and a Bluetooth connection so I can I can turn on the different UPS modes if I'm in Kansas I can turn it back to PV priority or I can turn it back to standard UPS if I'm 500 miles away if my internet is working here at the house which is also why I have that circuit on as an instant backup in case we do have power outage my internet's going to keep going 
because this is tied into my internet. So I can always monitor it no matter where I'm at. But that's kind of a long-winded um, update to where I'm at with this with this solar station type setup that I have here in the garage. And and uh, yeah, I, you know, honestly, it's just worked really well. So I think next video, I'm gonna show you folks how I'm going to put the 400 watts worth of solar in the backyard, how to get that wiring done. And I'm actually gonna be using a 12 volt landscape wire, this stuff right here. So it is much cheaper to buy than PV cables. This 12 gauge landscape wire that I have here is actually rated for a thousand volts or 20 amps. So it's gonna be more than enough for the 400 watts that I'm gonna put out in the backyard. Uh, and I bought this 100 feet of it for around $55, which is half the cost of PV cables. And it's a little bit easier to run because it comes as, as one string. You do have to install your own MC4 cables, but that's really simple. Um, and this is rated for direct berry. It's not necessarily rated for uh, interior walls, but I think I'm just gonna have to put it through my soffit, which is about a foot, and then it's gonna come back down. So I'm gonna bury what I can out in the yard, run it up the side of my house, through my attic, and down right behind me, and bring these ends down and connect it to the second string of the uh, AC300 to effectively give me eight, nine, 1200 watts worth of solar. That's the plan. So I'll keep you updated on how that works. But so far, I just wanted to let you folks know that it's working great. Haven't had any hiccups, any issues whatsoever. And uh, it's been fun kind of tracking and monitoring how much solar I can get throughout the week and how much I'm using, how much I'm putting out and getting in. So overall, it's working great, guys. So stay tuned and I'll show you how I'm going to upgrade this even further here in a couple of weeks. And then I think we're going to be done with this whole solar setup here in the shop. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned. We'll see you soon. Take care.